Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. So I found these cute little desk pad with pen sets at Walmart. You can find these little notebook and pen sets all over. The Dollar Tree has them and Meyer, the other discount stores. Just keep an eye out for them. These particular ones were from Walmart and uh, I can't say that this measurement will work exactly for what you find, but this concept will. So. Think of this as an inspiration. You might have to adjust depending on the size of your notebook or your pen, but we're gonna make this little cover. All right, so here's our cover for the notebook. Isn't that just the coolest thing ever? Little pen, it's got box for the pen. Now, the fun part about this is if you just prop open the cover a little bit, it stands. So it's a really cute display and let's get started, should we? We're gonna do the base of our notebook cover in basic black cardstock. This is six and a quarter by 11 inches. And we're gonna score it and trim it according to our template here. Now the template picture will be on the printable project sheet at kitchentablestamper.com. So if you just go into the description, if you're watching on YouTube and click on the link that says project details, click here. That'll take you to the blog post for this project. And then under the embedded video, you'll be able to print the project sheet. All right, the measurements will be there. Picture of the template for your cutting and scoring reference will be there. It's a really great resource. Um, so let's start with our cardstock in the Simply Score tool on the 11 inch side. And we are going to score at four and a quarter, four and a half, and bump out here to nine and a quarter, nine and three quarters, ten and a quarter, ten and three quarters. Then we're going to rotate one time to the right, and on the six and a quarter inch side, we're going to score it one half all the way down. Now we want to rotate this 180 degrees. We want to go to the other six and a quarter inch side. We're gonna score at three and a quarter, but we're gonna stop when we hit that nine and a quarter score line, that first one of those half inch score lines, just stop when you get there. All right, that is our base. Now let's work these, these score lines with the bone folder. And then we'll trim according to the template. Okay, I did not work the score here at my three and a quarter inches because that's a cut mark. And I didn't work this score yet either because for the most part, this is a cutting guide also. All right, so let's get some paper snips or you can get your paper trimmer and you can take this section out with a paper trimmer and you can take this section out with a paper trimmer. I'm gonna use my paper snips. I feel very confident cutting a straight line along this mark but this is the perfect place to grab your paper trimmer if you feel more comfortable with it. All right, so we've taken away that entire half inch stopping at our tabs. One, two, three tabs. All right, now we're gonna take out this upper rectangle. I'm gonna cut right along the score line. Keep it nice and straight, no bevels or angles here, but cut off that bruised and scarred cardstock. And same here. Cut off that bruised, scored cardstock just straight down and take out this big rectangle of the four long, skinny rectangles. Next, we can bring back the bone folder and we can work this little bit right here because now this is actually a fold. And then let's liberate these tabs. How are we going to do that? We're going to cut a little bevel and get rid of the smallest little rectangle in the corner. We can bevel cut right here to the score line because this is our glue tab. It makes a neater glue tab that way. And then we're going to take a little wedge right out where each of these score lines is. Now you're going to go up from the bottom and stop at the intersecting score line. And that is our notebook cover with pen holder. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh. Well, right now it's just black cardstock, but it's going to be so cute. Let's do our construction. We're going to need some tear and tape for this one. And you can use multi-purpose liquid glue if you like, because we're going to put, this is the inside of our notebook cover right here. See, front comes over and 
that's the outside and then rolls up and makes our little pen holder. So we want to put the adhesive on the outside of this glue tab here. Now your tear and tape adhesive is going to be just a little bit wide for the job and that's okay. If you're uncomfortable with it, use multi-purpose liquid glue, but you'll have to hold this tab in place until it grabs. So we've got our adhesive and it's all folded up. Now you want to fold not on this first line, but on the second line. Fold on the second line and then fold on the first line, burnish, and then pop up and there's your little pen loop. Now you don't want it to fall at the bottom. So let's flip to the bottom, put the side tabs in and then some tear and tape adhesive or some liquid glue here would be fine. And you're going to fold up and secure the bottom. Make sure everything squares up real nicely right here at this point. You can use your pen to just burnish that down. Make sure that that holds. Ha! Isn't that fantastic? Now, happy Halloween, my little notepad. I'm gonna pop that right inside. Let's use some tear and tape to adhere it to the cover. And we want an even border around the notebook and nice and straight. And burnish that down. Ha ha, look at that. The hard part is done. Our engineering feat is complete. <laughs> Let's get to decorating, shall we? I just love this little treat. It makes me smile. It's all these smiley face characters, right? Let's cover with some designer series paper. Now, here's something I wanted to show you. For this particular size notebook, if you happen to find them, they're four inches by five and a half inch notebooks. The designer series paper will make two covers if you follow the cutting that I did here. So this is two and three quarters by four inches. This is three and a quarter by four inches. When you put that together, the two and a quarter plus three and a quarter, it's six inches. So for every four by six inch piece of designer series paper, so for every piece, two pieces of designer series paper, you can do two notebook covers. So the measurements of this is very, um, it, I did it on purpose. I wanted to get as many notebooks covered as possible with a very cute design. All right, so here's our two and a quarter by four inch piece. That'll be your top panel. And just give it an even top right and left border and glue down. And then your bottom piece, this is the three and a quarter by four. So three and a quarter plus two and three quarters equals six inches. And it's gonna overlap just a little bit so you get a nice clean seam. And you'll see you get from one piece of the smiley pumpkin paper and one piece of the black and orange stripe paper, you get two notebook covers this way. You'll have a two by six inch scrap left, which is really good scrap too for card making or whatever project you like. So there's our covered notebook. Oh my gosh, it just keeps getting cuter, right? Let's look at the die cuts that we have here and start adhering them to the front. I have from the Hippo and Friends dies. This is the largest rectoval. <laughs> it's like an oval with a rectangle laid over it. So we've taken a call in these rectovals at the kitchen table stamper. So it's the largest one from Hippo and Friends, cut from basic black. And then, oh, bring Hippo and Friends back in there for just a minute. I've got a pumpkin pie swoopy square. It's the middle size swoopy square. They, I love all the swoopy squares, but the middle one is the one I use the most. And it layers awesome on top of the rectoval. <laughs> now let's take a look at our layering circles chart here. From the layering circles, we have the 1 and 15 sixteenths scallop cut from smoky slate. Now, if you want to keep using your layering circles, you could use either the 1 and 5 eighths or the 1 and 7 eighths inch um, smooth circle, but I wanted it to be a little bit more gray showing than 1 and 7 eighths and a little bit less gray showing than 1 and 5 eighths. So I grabbed my 1 and 3 eighths inch retired Stampin' Up! punch. 
If you're looking for a current die that would do awesome, you can also use this little stitch guy from the picture this dies. But I always forget that I have this one, but that's about the right size too. So a couple options there for your circle. All right, let's do some adhesive here. I'm gonna put my white circle on my gray scallop centered. And then I'm gonna adhere those two layers with liquid glue to my swoopy square centered. And now I'm gonna liquid glue my rectoval to the front of my notebook. Eh, I'm kind of generous with adhesive anyways, but because this is a notebook cover, let's really go ahead and glue that down tight. So cute. Which way do you think you like it better? Faces on the top or faces on the bottom? Or does it not matter to you? I'll, let, I'll finish it. You can wait till I'm done to decide. Let's put some dimensionals on the back. It's Halloween time. Time for the black Stampin' Dimensional Combo Pack. You get the regular size and the mini dimensionals in one pack when you order the black dimensionals. I love that because I do use both sizes. I know you can cut the regular Stampin' Dimensionals to you know, smaller sizes, but I really like the minis. I think they're convenient. And they save you a step of cutting it down and they save your scissors a little bit of that sticky wear and tear. All right, we're getting there, aren't we? So let's do some stamping. I'm gonna slide our samples to the side, clean up my adhesive and grab my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. I have some adhesive sheets from Stampin' Up and some of the black glitter paper. I love this, and I love that it's black glitter paper on black, so you don't have that white edge on your Halloween or your black projects. I've got a scrap of adhesive right here, and I think that this is going to work pretty well for our needs, so I'm going to go ahead and just peel the back, and the fun part with this is that it's scored so it helps you find where to get in there and lift the release paper from so we're gonna lift here and I'm just gonna um, trim right off and put this strip for another project don't throw any of this away it's like the end the edges of the dimensionals you can always use it for something all right so I've got my adhesive paper and I'm going to add my glitter paper and burnish down and cut away. Now, these two pieces right here are perfect for the next project. So I'm gonna put those right back in the envelope and I've got them for next time. Now, this is peel and stick, which is really pretty awesome. We're gonna cut that with the web die from the Frightful Tags die set. I love this Frightful Tags die set. It's got the coolest little labels, a fun long tag, a fence, a bear tree. Um, then the owl and hat are um, like icon dies. They enhance the stamp set. Really fun die set. You can bundle it with the Frightfully Cute stamp set you can bundle it with a frightfully cute stamp set and save 10 percent when you buy both items all right let me pop the cover on this and give it a crank and we are going to have a sticky web because of the glitter paper i'm going to just for safety go back and forth on the machine because we got a really really fine die cut here pull away and let's take this out. Let's see if my weeding trick is going to work with the web. I don't know if you've seen my weeding trick with this um, adhesive, but if you just roll your thumb, the side of your thumb, you don't need to get your nails underneath there or nothing. Just roll the side of your thumb until the adhesive backing comes away. Then when you peel the cardstock, you can do a big portion of the weeding, even on some of the most intricate dies just by peeling away that adhesive backing. All right, so look at how much. I think if I was even more careful, I would have been able to get more of this out of here. So we will have some weeding to do, but a lot of it just came right out. And then over here, we have another piece to pull from where that was scored. There, now my web is sticky. So let's go ahead and just knock out the rest of these negative pieces here. 
for some of the smaller, tighter ones at the center. I think I'm going to need to take your pick tool and we'll just push those guys out. Not too bad. All right. There's my little web. It's almost fully weeded. My cat pumpkin is going to cover the center of this. So I didn't weed out those last three little pieces. Um, let's get rid of the mess. <laughs> oh, so cute. Let's do some stamping. All right, the pumpkin cat is from the Clever Cat stamp set. I love this stamp set. It is my favorite Halloween stamp set from Stampin' Up! this year. And we are going to stamp our little jack-o'-lantern on basic white cardstock. I like to use a longer strip of cardstock because then I can magnet in two places without worrying that I'm putting them too close to each other. And I can stamp kind of off on the end of the paper. That will allow me to stamp it twice and get a really good black image. I'm gonna pull this up just a little bit higher. Make sure that lines up a little bit higher. Could just take the stamp off and lay it where it belongs, but that would be too easy, right? <laughs> All right, there's our jack-o'-lantern. We're gonna ink it with memento and you notice i put the clever cat stamp set underneath there that's the perfect way to hold your stamp up level so it's not on a downhill trying to ink on a downhill put your stamp case underneath and then ink stamp and then let's ink and repeat that'll make sure we get a good dark black face on our jack-o-lantern now I'm going to take off this plate. Let me just lift away. I'm going to bring in my second plate here and my little cat image. So I've got my little kitty image here. I'm going to line this up exactly where I want it to stamp. It's the actual stamp. I've got to get right above it. So if my hair's in the camera, I'm sorry. All right. That's where I want my cat to stamp. Final answer. Now we're going to put the plate in, pick up the image, ink it up, stamp it, pick it up, ink it, stamp it. Now we've got a nice jet black cat. See? Ta-da! Now we can take this out. Please slide your magnets away from each other when you're moving them. Never toward each other. You will hurt yourself and break your magnets. And then if you're going to stamp again and you don't want to clean the stamp right away, the small grid paper is the perfect way to keep your foam mat from getting all full of ink or your platform from getting all full of ink. Got my Stampin' Pierce mat, Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and pumpkin pie. Let's fill in our jack-o'-lantern. My like cute, cute little detail. Slide this to the side. We're gonna cut that out with scissors. We got a fussy cut. No dies for clever cats. Makes me sad. We're going to stamp Hey Boo on our tag. And Hey Boo is from Cutest Halloween Stamp Set. I die cut the tag using the Tailor made tags dies ahead of time. Let me show you those because we also did a little reinforcer for the hole on the top of the tag, which also comes from this Tailor made tags dies. So, this is the Tailor made tags die set. It's eight tags, and then the two reinforcer dies cut four of the round or three of the D enforcer. I cut my little D enforcer with pumpkin pie and we use the smallest clipped corner tag. This is the one I think I use the most. I love it. It's a good size for sentiments. And then being a cute little tag, it makes a great element. Let's put some adhesive on the back of our D ring. Should have done it with the adhesive sheets. Adhesive sheets are perfect for these little reinforcers. Cut out my pumpkin. 
And then just fussy cut with paper snips using a little, or leaving a little bit of a white border. Not much, make it pretty close to the line, but not exactly on it. Ta-da! Bring our notebook and our sample back in. I'm gonna add some mini dimensionals to the back of my cat. I love the black ones. You can always tell at a glance if they're peeled. I'm gonna put that right at the bottom of our little swoopy square over our web. And then, hey boo, needs a bow. I've got my um, black and white gingham ribbon here. Let's slide the length from the front to the back and pull off about the length of your hand, you see, from the palm to the tips of your fingers, just about. And then push up from the front, swoop over from the top, tuck and pull. And you will always get the perfect bow. See, ears are up, tails are down. We just have to slide to adjust to the top of our tag. And we don't have that first anchor knot underneath our bow to cause extra bulk. And we'll trim it away from the spool and cut off the end. I love it. Let's adhere it with some Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm keeping the dimensionals to the bottom half of my tag because this swoopy square is already on dimensionals and our pumpkin is on two layers of dimensionals. So we want to lay right over that orange swoopy square but under our pumpkin. Ha <laughs> ha, cute! Now we need some of the adhesive stars. I love these cute adhesive stars. They're a really great Halloween embellishment. We're gonna grab a take your pick tool and we're gonna do this one with black ones. Do a little black star, a little smaller black star, and then another black star kinda at a triangle. Hmm, I think I might put it down since our web is black. There we go. All right, cool, hey boo. Happy Halloween. <laughs> What do you guys think? Do you like the stripes on the top or the bottom? Do you like the bigger panel to be stripes or the bigger panel to be faces? Do you have a preference or are they both just one as cute as the other? <laughs> Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you've got any questions, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.